What if I tell you that with a hack Nintendo Switch you can get much more advanced user experience? Today I'm planning to show you the real miracles that the homebrew community has done with a hack Nintendo Switch. This video is not a guide to jailbroking your game console. First of all, Nintendo bans these kind of videos and secondly, it's not that hard to find guides on the internet. I believe that I have smart followers on YouTube and you can do it yourself. As far as I know, today almost every switch can be jailbroken. But that's a bit more complicated than it seems. Consoles that had been released before June of 2018 can be hacked with software jailbreak. All other consoles, including Switch Lite and Switch OLED, can be jailbroken only by installing a mod chip. This method requires strong soldering skills and equipment. But new consoles give us more benefits. They have more battery life and not mention OLED Switch has an incredible display. Plus, mode chips are much more stable than the software hack, because every time when you reboot an old Switch, you have to load a payload again and again. And if you don't carry a laptop with you, it might be a problem. With mode chips, you don't need to do so. There is no doubt that a hacked Switch allows you to run pirate games. But what else a hacked Switch allows us to do? First, we can download games directly from the console by using Tinfall. It works just fine with no cables and no torrents, and it automatically downloads all updates and patches. Sometimes games appear on this app a few weeks before the official release date, so I definitely left up blat. Sometimes games appear on this app a few weeks before the official release date, so I definitely recommend trying it. Nintendo Switch doesn't have a video player and we can easily fix this. It's also possible to install a book reader, a web browser and a whole gentleman set of programs for media content. And then comes something interesting. We are not just allowed to play free games, we can improve them. We can improve the performance and frame rate and even replace the textures. Nintendo Switch is a small tablet with a mobile processor and a trimmed operation system. Architecture and code are very simple, so people with the right hands create fan patches and unlock settings in games. Mostly it's possible because of one important thing – overclocking. Nintendo Switch is a portable console, and portability is always a compromise between performance and battery life. In the short-term use, according to my experience, overclocking should not cause any damage to the hardware, especially if you keep Switch in a dock station. To be honest, Nintendo itself uses overclocking to improve performance in some titles, for example, to decrease loading time. Well, in stock CPU works on 1020 MHz and GPU on 760 MHz, CPU can be overclocked to 1800 MHz and GPU to 900. You can almost double the CPU's performance. Of course, all games are different and GPU here is a weak spot, and the amount of RAM is not great, but you cannot deny that the numbers we can achieve are impressive. Overclocking will not affect the majority of games with default settings, because developers optimize the games for Switch very well. If a game works in 720p with 60fps, so there is nothing we can do with this. Actually, this is the biggest Switch advantage compared to Steam Deck, that the games are well optimized. But in heavy projects that have a dynamic resolution or a non-stable frame rate, overclocking makes the difference. For example, let's talk about Wolfenstein 2. In this game, developers were trying their best to give gamers the best performance and stable 30 FPS, but with a very aggressive dynamic resolution. As a result, it works well, but it hurts the eyes a bit, giving it a bit frequency and we have a bigger average resolution in the game. Perfect. Mortal Kombat 11 has 60 FPS, but it's non-stable and most of the time it's around 50 or 55 FPS. Overclocking will make it stable at 60 FPS. In many games, including Nintendo games, there are problems with performance in some areas. In Breath of the Wild, 99% of the game everything is great, but in Foggy Forest the frame rate drops to 20 FPS. Again, overclocking solves these problems. Anyway, it's just the beginning. 
I already have mentioned that people make patches and change game settings. Many ports from 2007, like Assassin's Creed or Bioshock, work at 30 FPS, which is much more better than they worked on Xbox 360 or PS3. By using homebrew patches, we can unlock 60 FPS and advanced graphic settings, and by using overclocking, we can let it work properly. One more problem is the quality of content in games. Cartridges are very expensive and Nintendo is trying to save some money. The storage of the cartridge is 8GB and developers are trying to compress the games to fit the storage. They use compressed audio and textures. To sum up, there is nothing wrong with the performance of the console. The console is capable of handling content in better quality. Moreover, we cannot download games with better quality, with better audio and video from the online store. On the store, there is the same version of the game with compressed quality. All these things can be solved with audio and texture packs from pirate websites. Ok, but it's been all about Switch games. This console can handle much more. Thanks to its hardware, Linux and Android can be installed on the Switch. Also, we can install additional system shells like RetroPie. On Android, there is a great library of its own emulators, games, apps and homebrew. For example, China doesn't want to port Genshin Impact to Switch, so we can do it ourselves. But it works terribly, to be honest. Linux can transform your Switch into a computer. Don't forget to use a keyboard and mouse. Honestly, I don't think that this is a great idea because it doesn't worth it. And if you want to suffer, there are many different ways to do so. On Android, there are many problems with controllers and errors, and it feels like Android doesn't use whole Tegra's potential. But you can, if you really, really want to. Another interesting story is emulation. A long time ago, users used to create homebrew emulators for hacked consoles, and there were only standalone apps. Nowadays, things have changed. With Switch, it's much more complicated. Now, Nintendo makes their own emulators, developers make their own emulators, there is RetroArch and so on. So you can say, install RetroArch and it will cover all your emulation needs. But I hate it. I couldn't stand it when I was installing it on my PS Vita. Then Raspberry Pi and the same with Switch. Moreover, it works worse than single standalone emulator. Let's start with Nintendo. There are NES, SNES, Nintendo 64 and Mega Drive. And they are on the official online store. Of course, people hacked these apps and added a fix allowing them to open any game. Nintendo 64 emulator works fine with the majority of games, but RetroArch? Just look at this. For Game Boy emulation, there is a perfect app called MGBA. Unfortunately, there are not many standalone apps for emulations on Switch, so we have to use RetroArch. Even I hate it. PS1, as I expected, works fine. Dreamcast emulator surprised me with this performance. PSP emulator doesn't work at all. I tried the official PSP emulator and RetroArch, and it's all the same. It's Pretty interesting because PSP emulator works even on cheap Android smartphones. I guess just no one cares about it and no one wants to optimize it for Switch. We can make PSP emulator work better by installing Android or Linux, because these OS have been used for many years and apps are better optimized for them. We can even try to open something for PS2 since there is emulator for Android. But there is only enough performance for 2D games, because 3D titles barely work. It seems like Switch needs just a bit of performance to run games perfectly. Mostly games have 40 or 45 FPS, and because the game speed depends on the frame rate, it seems like it works at 75% of speed. On Android, we can install Pop Mobile and Call of Duty, plus we can use game streaming. We can stream games on Switch from computer, anyway, it has some stability issues, so I would not recommend using it. But if all of this doesn't impress you, there is a huge library of ports from PC. Max Payne, Morrowind, Diablo, GTA, Original One, not that bullshit from the store, Half-Life, Portal, Heroes of the Magic, and you cannot believe it, but there is a Counter-Strike that you can play online. Some of you may say, yep, this is all great, but I'm not gonna use it in actual life. 
and you might be right. Anyway, it was just good to share this information with you. Thumbs up or thumbs down, it's up to you guys. Thanks for watching and see you later.